a huge thanks to Surfshark, who are sponsoring today's video and making it possible. Hello and welcome to another video. I'm Paul Lucas and today I am at Dublin Airport Terminal 1. Lufthansa is the airline I'm going to be flying with today and their CEO was recently on record as stating that Lufthansa wants to bore you as a customer and to a certain extent that is absolutely true. Lufthansa are one of the most consistent airlines I've ever travelled with. I must have got 50 flights under my belt with them. Lufthansa are so consistent it's always a novelty to find something unusual. They're running an Airbus A340 between Dublin and Frankfurt all through the summer season right up until October the 23rd. And what's more, it's the older Dash 300 variant. These are becoming increasingly rare. First, a bit of trivia. If you've been to Dublin Airport, you may have walked past this building many times. This is in fact the original 1940 terminal built when Dublin Airport first opened. It was soon over capacity though, and in the 1950s, the North Terminal opened. Neither are in use as air terminals today. It's quite unusual to find an airport that has not one, but two disused terminals. The modern development of Dublin airports simply skirt around this island of built heritage. I've said in a previous video that I prefer Terminal 1 to Terminal 2, and that's mostly because of the more efficient security lines that I find here. Despite having used this terminal dozens of times over the last few years, I still have trouble finding the lounge. It's actually straight past security. It's actually very easy to miss because it's located between the two main security channels, but it's upstairs and a generally decent place to wait for your flight away from the perils and temptations of airport shopping. This is a lounge you can access via Priority Pass, but in this case I was flying business class over to Frankfurt, and so the class of my ticket was able to get me into the lounge alone. I'd saved on the cost of this ticket and maximised my value from it by booking an open jaw. I was actually heading on to Budapest later the same day, and I had a return booked six months later from Istanbul. That's generally my strategy that I use on short haul when booking business class. Because I do this full time now, I can plan strategically. The total cost of that ticket was 362 euros. There are four sectors on that ticket, and that breaks down at a cost of around 90 euros for each sector. Compare the 90 euros I effectively paid for this sector with the one-way economy fare I gave you at the start of this video. Each flight I take is an opportunity to make more content, and I hope that goes some way to explaining some of my thought processes about why I often fly business class over economy. Sometimes it just makes sense. Let's talk online security for a moment. It's so important to engage a virtual private network or VPN while you're traveling. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, and they are a market leading and independently audited VPN provider. Turning on a VPN whenever you travel abroad is so important. Surfshark encrypts all of the information sent to and from your phone, which means that it is safe from criminals, hackers and surveillance agencies whenever you're using public Wi-Fi. I'll be traveling over the next few months around the world. I'll be traveling to over a dozen different countries and each time I step off the plane, the first thing I'll do is engage Surfshark for my own protection. There are other good reasons to use Surfshark too. By logging in from a different country, you may be able to leverage lower prices and you may also be able to find cheaper flights online. It'll also help you access more entertainment. I personally use it for checking on the BBC, videos for which are not usually available outside the UK, and football highlights. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 83% off the regular price and an extra month thrown in for free. Back in Dublin, however, our A340 has just landed on the inbound flight from Frankfurt and it's over half an hour late. The reality is boarding and deboarding such a large aircraft takes an awful lot longer than the usual Airbus A320 that would operate this route. As things stood, it was looking pretty touch and go as to whether I'd make my connection in Budapest. Frankfurt is a notoriously awful airport for making any connection. If you're interested in reading a written report of this particular trip with some additional details, head on over to Simple Flying. The link is in the description and it'll take you straight to my article. Oh, and the reason that Lufthansa are operating this A340 on this route? They cited operational reasons. It's not entirely clear what reasons those are, and I've heard plenty of rumors. If you know the reason for sure, let me know in the comment section below. Hello. 
business class on the Lufthansa A340-300 is an 8222 configuration. There's no first class on these aircraft, so business class occupies the whole of the front cabin. This is Lufthansa's long-haul business class because this aircraft usually operates long-haul routes. The product is now pretty outdated. They're introducing a new 121 staggered configuration when they take delivery of the Boeing 777X, and that's due to come online in the next couple of years. As a point of note, I actually took this flight on the first day that it was operating with an A340, so there was plenty of interest from enthusiasts and staff alike looking at this exotic beast which had turned up at Dublin. Our takeoff was to the east, which is standard at Dublin given the prevailing wind direction. What's less common, however, is finding such a wonderful summer's day to fly out of the Irish capital. Usually it's pretty cloudy, but this was a fantastic day for flying. Let's take a look at today's route. Dublin to Frankfurt is 677 miles and the flying time today just 1 hour and 38 minutes. The skies over Europe are becoming increasingly crowded and therefore on a good clear day there's lots of opportunity to see plenty of aircraft. Next let's take a look at the seat. These A340 aircraft are now a little long in the tooth and are due to be replaced by the A350s which have just come online and the Boeing 777X which is due in the next couple of years. Still, the aircraft are in pretty good condition and the table, which is stowed in the armrest like this, is very sturdy. I often find that when tables have a hinge like this to fold out, that they can easily become broken or weak, leaving the whole table on an annoying slope. There's also a remote control for the in-flight entertainment located next to the table. As far as the screen goes, it's not in high definition and it's been some time since I had to operate a screen with this arrangement. The knack that you need to fold this out properly is not exactly intuitive, but I got there in the end. I was quite surprised to see just how small the footwells were. I can't imagine that would be too comfortable on a long flight when you've reclined your seat into a bed. One thing I will say about these old seats though is they're fantastically comfortable to sit or lounge in. Even though they don't have adjustable wings on the back of the headrest, if you gradually recline the seat into the lounge position, it's extremely comfortable. In fact, one of the most comfortable that I've tried recently. There isn't, however, a great amount of storage. There's a little pocket that you might miss down the side of the seat, just here. However, these seats do feature something I've not seen on any other airline. A glasses holder, just here. Finally, there is a universal power point available for each passenger, but no USB charging. For this particular flight, I ordered a low calorie meal for two reasons. Firstly, I really need to watch my weight. And secondly, I've flown a lot with Lufthansa and I'm getting quite bored of their standard options. However, I really don't recommend the low calorie meals on Lufthansa. This is the second I've had in the last few months and both were exceptionally bland. It almost feels like you're being punished for choosing to eat healthily. This stuff is the worst of the lot on the plate. It tasted like chipboard. 
I'm sure that in Germany, where Lufthansa is from, all of this stuff is pretty popular if you want to lose some weight. But there are other ways of eating healthily without sacrificing all the flavour in your food. Fortunately, Lufthansa serves decent juices and coffee, which were able to take away the taste of misery in my mouth. The meal service was concluded quickly, and we were soon descending into the Frankfurt area. Just like in Dublin, it was a beautiful summer's day. So there you have it, Dublin to Frankfurt on an Airbus A340. The good news is Lufthansa are still operating this A340 on this route every Wednesday until October the 23rd inclusive. So if you haven't done this yet and you want to, there's still plenty of time. If I could give you just one tip, it would be don't book a short connection at Frankfurt. Sadly, I missed my connection despite running for about half a mile having re-cleared security. Thanks Frankfurt for being so rubbish at connections.